What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package, and fourth stimulus check update. Also, student loan forgiveness uh, we're going to be talking about here in this video. We have a lot to talk about here. Um, there's actually billions of dollars here uh, we'll be talking about here in this video. And potentially inflation maybe going down maybe we'll be talking about a lot of different things here in this video so if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel yet make sure to click the subscribe button down below it's completely free to do so and remember that new videos come out here every day uh, so make sure you're subscribed and click the bell icon so you get notifications when we go live also thanks so much for hitting the like button for us down below well it's a tale of Two stories. It's a double-edged sword. It's either one, the world is on a tipping point of permanently high prices that companies might not reduce their prices after people are used to paying these high prices, or this, that food inflation relief is within sight as crops and crude prices are now pulling back. Improving supply outlook is pushing down lofty grain prices and the price of oil is going down. But will we see relief there? <laughs> well, we'll have to see. You can see here, the global economy has reached a, quote, tipping point where it may be impossible to stop runaway inflation, the world's top central banker warned. As the war in Ukraine and U.S. slowdown leaves Britain on the brink of a recession, and the U most people think the U.S. are already in a recession. In its annual economic report, the Bank for International Settlements, called the BIS, said that the leading economies are poised to enter a period for which soaring prices become embedded and difficult to control. It's called on central banks to step up efforts to tackle soaring in places while limiting the impact to growth. They said the key for central banks is to act quickly and decisively before inflation becomes entrenched. And if it does, the cost of bringing it back under control will be higher than it is now. The long-term benefits of preserving stability for households and businesses outweigh any short-term costs. And this goes exactly with what the U.S. Fed has done and other central banks all around the world raising interest rates. Remember, the U.S. Fed just uh, raised a triple interest rate hike here in the U.S. of three quarters of a percent. This comes after they previously did a double interest rate hike before that of a half a percent. And an interest rate hike before that, as well as interest rates are soaring here in the U.S. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's a painful process for average everyday Americans because that means that you're going to be paying more money on your credit card interest. Um, if you have any variable type of um, interest rates like credit cards or um, home loans or anything with a variable interest rate, you're going to be paying more money on the interest. So now's a good time to pay down credit card interest uh, if you can, if you can be in the key <laughs> word there. Anybody that goes to buy a new home is going to be paying much more higher interest rates now. Uh, anybody that goes to refinance now that didn't refinance here in, you know, previously in the, you know, three months or more ago is going to get much higher rates. So, um, however, we are still, I mean, if you look back at history, I mean, you know, <laughs> we had much, much higher rates, you know, throughout history, but, um, this is kind of what they need to do to bring inflation back down. And remember, we're actually going to probably have three more interest rate hikes this year alone. And they're, they're saying that the next interest rate hike this year is going to be another triple interest rate hike of um 0.75 they, they consider a, a single and a single interest rate high 25 basis points a double 50 and a triple uh 75 or three quarters of a percent so 
Interest rates are going to continue to go up this year. It's just kind of one of the ways that the Fed and other banks all around the world bring down their uh, inflation. Remember that inflation is not just here in the U.S. It's pretty much all around the world. Gas prices are at all-time highs all around the world. Food costs are at all-time highs all around the world as well. But we are seeing some food costs come down. The price of oil has come down here over the last week. We'll have to see. The, the problem is, is that like, you know, one of the problems keeping prices high, the war in Ukraine, Putin doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. It doesn't even seem like he has an out to the war, you know, a, a way to get out of the war and save face. Um so, you know, in fact, um, one of the directors of NATO recently said here that he thinks that the war could go on for years, for years. Imagine how long gas prices and food prices could <laughs> be prolonged higher than, than the, you know, how low they could be, you know. I mean, literally, when, when Russia started putting troops on the border of Ukraine, I mean, oil prices just started going up instantly just because of the, the threat of war. I mean, they just started going up literally like within days because of what could happen. And, and honestly, the market was right because, look, now the U.S. isn't buying Russian oil. We have Europe uh, saying by the end of the year they're going to stop. And, and really, multiple countries are, have also stopped buying Russian oil. In fact, Russia has also stopped selling oil to other countries as well. So, I mean, it, it, it did actually kind of make sense. So the market was actually right. So if, if the war ever ended, that would all start to come back down. Theoretically, maybe. Um, so this is, this is all kind of the problem here is that this could go on for a long time. And uh, Russia's blocking shipments of grain and, and wheat and everything out of Ukraine. Russia's also not shipping a lot of their shipments of everything, uh, you know, all their um, food to the rest of the world here as well, because they now consider them enemies. So this is part of the reason why food and also, you know, why food is at an all-time high in the U.S. and all around the world. The United Nations said months ago food uh, for the whole world was at an all-time high. And this is continuing to go high. Not to mention that gas prices, you have to ship everything with diesel and gas. It's, it's just uh, it's a nasty cycle. It's a nasty cycle. But we have seen a, a little bit of a pullback, and we have seen some supply chain um, relief here recently. Um, oil has gone down here in the last week, but well, I mean, you know how that goes. Um, WTI crude down, um, over $10 a barrel down to about 110. Um, but you know how that goes with gas prices. The, the gas companies are just not relaying <laughs> the savings here to us, um, on the gas pumps. I mean, we're at 489. I mean, that's that's down about 10 cents, a little bit over 10 cents. But diesel here in the U.S., um, the the high, uh, the all-time high of diesel was uh, 581. 581 was the all-time high. So we're still two cents within the all-time high here. So this is the problem here with with these gas prices here. Uh, in fact, you can actually see here California. Uh, in fact, you can see this story here from the LA Times. California lawmakers to investigate steep gas prices and accuse oil companies of ripping off motorists. Yeah, so California is potentially going to, or is looking into these um, gas and oil companies uh, to see if there's something they can do. So is the federal government actually. Uh, to see what they can do against these gas and oil companies. So, I don't know. I don't know. The thing is, is that they're actually charging us a much higher price than the actual cost of oil. We've had 110, 120. We've had oil much higher uh, than this before. 
So why is gas prices this high? I mean, we've had much higher prices of oil here before, actually. You can actually see here, um, in 2008, the price of oil reached $147 uh, for the price of oil. And yet we're only at 110 right now. We're only at 110 right now. So why are we paying $5 a gallon? 490, you know, just last week it was $5 a gallon. When back in 2008, it was $147 a barrel, almost $150 a barrel. We weren't paying $5 a gallon then. Because, you know, this was the all-time high. The all-time high of gas here was just a week ago, two weeks ago. So this just goes to show you that these gas companies are charging us more than they should. They're not charging us what they should based on the price of oil. They're gouging us, basically. <sighs> yeah, so let me know your thoughts here in the comments on that. Uh, next up, we have several billion dollars here um, that has been approved by um, the Department of Education and uh, the White House, the Biden administration, I don't know, whatever you want to call it here, um, in student loan forgiveness and student loan relief. Uh, if you know anybody or if you have this, uh, check this out here because this has happened. There's two different segments of this. Uh, so check this out. And if you know anybody that has this, you definitely want to share this video with them. Okay, first, you can see this article here directly from Forbes. That's why I like to show you guys my articles on screen so you see it. It's You see it's reliable sources and stuff. I mean, I, I use sources from everywhere. I don't pick and choose really. So, you know, whatever, as long as they're reliable sources. Uh, Education Department approves $8.1 billion in student loan forgiveness under expiring program. Will Biden extend this? And this is the, uh, let me zoom this in here. The Biden administration announced on Friday that it has approved over $8 billion in student loan forgiveness for 145,000 borrowers under a temporary expansion of the public service loan forgiveness program. Uh, but the initiative is set to end in just a few months and advocates are calling on Biden to extend it. So this is over $8 billion in student loan forgiveness here that you can see here. The Biden administration has announced that it has approved over $8 billion approved in student loan forgiveness. Yeah, so this is through the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. Now, there's also a, another $6 billion of student loan forgiveness that is separate, I believe, because this is through a settlement. Um, I, I did another video on that. We'll get to that here in a minute. Um, but you can see here the details here. Biden administration approves billions of dollars in student loan forgiveness under the expanded public student service loan forgiveness program. Say it 10 times fast. Um, they had previously announced this, and they had just approved an, uh, a broad but temporary expansion of the public service loan forgiveness program. Borrowers who commit to working for at least 10 years to certain nonprofits or government organizations can get their federal student loans forgiven through this program. But historically, the program has been plagued by low approval rates, complicated eligibility rules, and poor oversight. Um, and this has been going on for many, many years, well before the Biden administration. And they're now just basically saying a lot of people should have been approved and we're kind of fixing this problem. Uh, the expansion, which the Biden administration has dubbed the limited PSLF waiver program, relaxes eligibility rules, effectively expanding the program. For a limited time, past loan periods that would have other, otherwise been rejected, such as periods where payments were made under an ineligible repayment plan or payments were made on non-qualifying kinds of federal student loans, can, can be counted towards the time period required for borrowers to get their student loans forgiven under the program. 
Some borrowers may have to take certain steps like consolidating their loans through direct consolidation programs and submitting forms certifying their public service employment to get the credit. So you may have to, you know, do these steps. It may, it may take a little bit of work here. And again, this is directly from Forbes. Um, but the Biden administration's latest figure of $8.1 billion under this program is $1 billion more than its recent figures in the spring. This program is set to end on October 31st. Happy Halloween. And uh, if they don't, then it will revert back to the original rules, which were far more restrictive. This new waiver marks a once-in-a-generation opportunity for our educators to access student debt cancellation, one of the nation's largest teacher unions says. So, yeah, I believe t teachers can possibly qualify for this. Educators and public service workers need more time to get the forgiveness they deserve. I will, I will try to link you to this uh, article in the uh, description of this video. Uh, if not, just uh, Google this headline here from Forbes, and uh, I'm sure it will bring you up. Next up, I'll link you to a video about how to qualify for $6 billion of other student loan forgiveness where a bunch of schools, if you went to specific schools, um, they just are forgiving student loans for a whole bunch of schools. Uh, I did another video on that showing you which schools here as well. And I had a lot of comments saying, thank you, Jimmy. My school was on that. I got to look into that as well. Also, I want to mention here that President Biden, uh, there's been a lot of sources directly from the White House that says um, they think he's he is going to. It's not confirm, It's not for sure yet, but there's been sources from in the White House that says uh, they think he's going to do $10,000 of student loan forgiveness for everybody with student loans. Um, and this is because student loans are just so uh, overburdening. I mean, $10,000 doesn't even cover one year of uh, most colleges at this point. So um, that that could be coming this year as well. Uh, this is just one type of stimulus program. We think about all the different types. And again, you know, I, this is just one thing I cover here on our channel. Um, you know, we also have the potential $2,400 Social Security raise um, every year. We also have the child tax credits, which went out last year. And uh, if they don't pass it again this year, it will be it will go back to the two thousand dollars per year uh, for children. You will need to file taxes to get that. Um, so if you don't normally file taxes and you have children, you probably want to file taxes, even if you don't normally file them. Uh, file a federal tax return uh, to get two thousand dollars per child. Uh, again, you know, look look into it and stuff, you know, because, again, I'm talking to thousands of people. Um, but uh, the child tax credits have been around for like 23, 24 years. So uh, you might not want to miss out on that, even if you don't normally file taxes. And there's all these state uh, uh, stimulus checks, tax credits stuff, too, as well. Um, you know, if your state comes out with one and they require you to file taxes, you might want to go ahead and just file a tax return with your state, even if you don't normally file. Just because you don't normally file or you're not required to file doesn't mean you can't go ahead and file a tax return, even if you didn't have any uh, income or anything like that. You can file just to tell the state you exist and uh, you're on Social Security or something like that. You can f still file a tax return. Um and then potentially get your stimulus check. But again, I'm talking to thousands and thousands and thousands of people here. Um, so, you know, I can't really give individual advice to any specific person or anything like that. Again, I'm also not an accountant or anything like that as well. So that's why I said, if, if you fall in any of those categories, you know, talk to somebody who might know your specific situation, go to an H&R Block and just ask them a question or talk to somebody in your family who might know something about your tax situation as well. Because again, if you can get that money, whatever that, you know, whatever situation we're talking about here, it might be worth it for you to just file. Okay. The IRS actually says that there's a lot of money that people miss out on every year because they just, they just don't file. So keep that in mind here. 
Um, I'll link you to a few videos you probably want to watch next here. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell icon uh, so you get notifications when we go live. Subscribe is completely free to do so. You literally just click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on new videos. Uh, you can click this top video here to see that $6 billion of student loan forgiveness uh, that you don't want to miss out on. If you know anybody that has student loans, click that video next. This bottom video here is my newest stimulus check video. You can watch that video next. And here's my newest video on $2,400 social security raises. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.